some tips, some gateway info, and some analysis services nuggets. That's coming up. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon, and today's Thursday, which means we're gonna do our information roundup like we do every Thursday here on Guy in a Cube. And I actually found quite a bit of items this last week. I couldn't fit them all in a video. I've got a few items that are down in the description below as kind of bonus items that I won't talk about in the video. So let's dig in. First up is a blog post from Matt Allington where he looks at his top 10 tips for getting started with Power BI. I think this is a great blog post, especially for someone just starting with Power BI. They're not sure what to do or what it's all about or what to really focus on. I think he does a great job of just honing it down to a couple things that you should really look at if you wanna get started with Power BI. So if you're new to Power BI, be sure to check out this blog post. And even if you've been using Power BI for a while, be sure to check it out and see if you'll learn a thing or two. Next up is a blog post from Marco Russo where he looks at translations and analysis services tabular 2016. This is a new feature in 2016 and he looks at how to create, how to edit them, how to work with them inside of tabular. If your organization is interested in translations, be sure to check out this blog post. It's a good primer for how to get started with them. Moving over to the on-premises data gateway for Power BI, ODBC is now supported for scheduled refresh. So that means you can create a data source for your gateway that uses an ODBC connection. This is great for data sources that may not be available natively inside of Power BI. So if you've got an ODBC driver, you can just go ahead and use that. Also, if you're using our script inside of your Power BI desktop file, the personal gateway now supports refreshing that as well. Another tidbit in this article is that there are performance counters available for you to troubleshoot performance issues with the gateway itself. They've been there for a while, but there's a link to a blog post that goes into detail about what they are. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in troubleshooting performance issues. A pricing update was announced for the Power BI Embedded Service. This is the Azure service where you can go ahead and embed Power BI items into your web applications or just anywhere. And so the change is all about session-based pricing. So actually publishing the file and getting items embedded into your application doesn't cost you anything. What's gonna cost you is if you go above zero to 100 sessions. There's a great breakdown for you in this blog post. So if this is something that you're using, be sure to check this out to see what's coming your way. We had an update for SQL Server data tools. And in that update, there is a tabular model explorer. So in this Explorer, you can do just that. You can look at your model and see the elements that are inside of it. Kai Oncroft does a great job of talking about how this feature works. If you're creating analysis services tabular models, you're doing that in SQL Server Data Tools, be sure to update to the latest version so that you can start using the object model. Okay, what was your favorite item? Go ahead and leave that in the poll up above or down in the comments below and let me know. Also, let me know if there was an item that I didn't mention that you thought was interesting. And if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. Every Thursday I do an information roundup and every Tuesday I do a technical item. So thanks for watching and keep being awesome.